Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm running some tests to answer a question that I've been curious about for a while. What is the most waterproof wood glue one can buy? And I'm not just talking about simply getting wet. I want to know what glue can bond two pieces of wood, live underwater for a week, and yet still hold them together. To find out, I'm going to bond 18 samples together using nine different adhesives one control and one test each. I'll then let them cure for about a week, soak them for another, and finally pull them apart to keep things fair. We'll be using a gantry mounted scale and record which glue was both strongest in absolute terms and as a percent of its non-soaked counterpart. And now, let's take a look at the entrance. Three contenders initially come to mind. First is Tight Bond 3. It's ubiquitous in the woodworking, DIY, and commercial spaces, and for good reason. It's completely waterproof when cured, cleans up easily with water while still wet, and provides an exceptionally strong bond. Next, we've got Gorilla Glue, one brand of many moisture-curing urethane adhesives. Like Tight Bond 3, it is totally waterproof when cured, but is a little tougher to work with. It's solvent cleanup and expands while curing. The final option in what I'll refer to as the obvious choice category is a two-part epoxy, also completely waterproof when cured, but does require mixing. Cleanup is tough, requiring acetone or MEK. Now we've got the B-Squad, glues that might surprise us, but wouldn't be my first choice if I were building something for a boat. Starting with Harbor Freight brand wood glue. It claims to be waterproof, but is kind of difficult to use. It's awkwardly thick, but does clean up with H2O. Unlike Type Bond, it doesn't really have any reputation in the DIY community, good or bad. It could surprise us though. Next is Goop Brand All Purpose Adhesive. It advertises a flexible waterproof bond, and unlike others here, can be used on many different materials. Cleanup is with acetone. We've also got Tight Bond 2. This is many woodworkers' go to product and will likely be found in every home shop across the country. It's easy to use, cleans up with water, and provides an exceptionally strong bond. However, it is only water resistant, not waterproof. Rounding out the B tier is PL Premium Polyurethane Construction Adhesive. It bonds a number of common building materials, cleans up with mineral spirits, and has a relatively low price per ounce. It's marketed only as water resistant. Finally, we've got the C tier entries. I don't expect much from these two products, but they're so commonly available, I thought it would be good to include them. First is Tight Bond CA Glue. It's a cyanoacrylate that bonds very quickly, but is quite a bit weaker than PVA type wood glues or epoxies. Most people know adhesives of this type by their more common name, super glue. The last product I've got for you is regular old liquid nails construction adhesive. It's cheap and cleans up with water, but is otherwise pretty low performance. I kicked off this endeavor by re-ripping some three quarter inch stock to just shy of three inches. The main goal here was to make sure every glue had its fair shot and we weren't sneaking in any extra width here or there that would give any particular product an advantage. Also to make sure everything was starting with the same clean slate, I ran all the boards through the planer prior to glue up. Finally, a quick trim on the table saw gave us 30-ish identically sized and planed fresh pieces of wood ready to be sacrificed to the test gods. To set up my glue area, I used a combination square to mark about 3 inches on each board. Again, just trying to minimize the variables and ensure each product is contacting an equal area. Actual glue up was pretty easy but did take a while. It also wasn't as straightforward as applying and clamping. Each product had slightly different setup instructions. For example, PVA wood glues like clamps, whereas epoxies run the risk of being over squeezed. I tried to apply each in the most ideal way possible. After a day, I unclamped and brought everything in the house to cure. Mostly for temperature reasons, as this whole experiment started several months ago when it was still getting pretty cool at night. After about two weeks, I applied labels to each sample that was destined for submersion. 
the thought being that I didn't really know how waterproof Sharpie ink was and I didn't want to remove from the water only to find I didn't know which sample was which. Then it was finally time to drown these things. Pro tip, wood floats, so you might need a little something to hold them down like I did. The plan is to keep them soaked for about a week. So now, we wait. Alright guys, this is the moment of truth. I did get a little busy over the last couple of weeks, and I was thinking these wood samples were going to stay in here for like a week or two at most, but it's actually been like a month, so let's see what we got. And oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> it's, the water has turned a reddish brown, and there is quite a stench coming out of here. I would say if these wood glues could survive this test, we can call them waterproof. To get some of that slime off, I'm going to give them a quick little freshwater rinse and oh no, we have our first failure out the gate. It's the regular liquid nails. That means we've got our first result and we can definitely say this product is not waterproof. The plan here is to build a gantry style frame and then use ratchet straps and a crane scale to measure our results. Not getting too fancy, just some 5 16 bolts and 2x4s. I'll hold uh, both ends of the Franken tester to the frame with a couple of 1000 pound rated D-rings. The test samples are going to be strung up in the middle of this abomination with some 3 hold brackets on either side. And this is the result. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we're going to give it the old college try. So, without further delay, let's get on with it. We'll start with what I'm assuming will be the weakest glue, our dry sample of liquid nails. After applying 450 pounds to the joint with absolutely no signs of failure, I decided this wasn't going to work, especially if we're assuming this is our weakest specimen. It also started getting pretty sketchy when we consider failure meant something snapping at the, um, reproductive spheres level. However, not one to get dressed up for nothing, I decided to continue the battle but up the artillery. This meant heading out to the table saw to make a jig, breaking out the impact driver to an attach an adapter, and employing this, the Dake Hydraulic Press. It's capable of delivering 10 tons of wood crushing pressure. If anything survives this, I'll just admit defeat and move on. This press has a ram with a cross section of 2.47 inches, meaning we can take our PSI measurement and multiply it by that to get our actual pressing force. It works out to roughly 810 PSI per ton. First up is Titebond Cyanoacrylate Glue. Dry. <laughs> no way. And that will result in our second fail test of this video. Before splitting the bracket and catching some mania on camera, our dry sample of CA glue withstood 1,497 PSI or 3,698 pounds without yielding. Really quite remarkable, but it also made me realize that maybe I should move on to the wet samples. I replaced the wooden bracket with a steel press plate and continued. Next up is goop. Finally, yes, we've got a result. Goop yielded at 406 PSI or 1,003 pounds. Considering it's glorified rubber cement, that's actually pretty respectable. Next up, epoxy. Pfft, 
Here we've got a wood failure at 1,495 PSI or 3,693 pounds. I think it's clear to say that epoxy is very waterproof. Next up, Gorilla Brand Polyurethane Glue. And another wood failure before the glue yielded, this time at 1,570 PSI or 3,878 pounds. This is another very waterproof glue. Next up, Tight Bond 2. <laughs> Excellent! Another glue failure this time at 518 PSI or 1,279 pounds. I'm not too surprised here, TB2 is only marketed as water resistant, not waterproof, so let's move on. Next up, PL Premium Polyurethane Construction Adhesive. Yet again, we've got a wood failure while the glue survives. This time, our max rating was 1,344 PSI or 3,320 pounds. It's interesting how all of these wood failures occur right in that mid-3,000 range. Makes me feel like at least we're keeping our variables tight. Next up, Harbor Freight Waterproof Wood Glue. Uh, yeah, that was pretty pathetic. The glue failed at just 77 PSI or 190 pounds. It's by far our worst performer, aside from the liquid nails which didn't even make it to the press. Next up, CA Glue. CA Glue, wet. And this appears to be another wood failure at 1,424 PSI or 3,517 pounds. So CA, or super glue, is remarkably waterproof. Finally, we've got Tight Bond 3. Woo. I guess we're going out with a bang. The glue failed at 583 PSI or 1,440 pounds.
This leads me to believe that Titebond's claim that TB3 is waterproof is not totally true, at least when compared to some of the other products we tested that appear impervious to water. And here's everything all summed up. PL Premium, CA Glue, Epoxy, and Gorilla Glue were all stronger than the wood they were bonding, despite what ended up being months underwater. Type Bond 2 and 3 were remarkably similar in performance, with the latter outperforming TB2 by just over 12%. Goop actually wasn't all that affected by water, it's just not that strong of a glue. Its selling point is the fact it's quick to bond and is compatible with a wide variety of substrates. Harbor Freight Wood Glue was an especially poor performer considering it's marketed as waterproof, yielding at just 190 pounds. Then there's Liquid Nails. It's absolutely not waterproof. But then again, the manufacturer doesn't really make this claim, so I'm not really faulting it. It's also worth mentioning I used their low VOC formula, which is the product currently found at the big boxes. It's water-based. If I recall correctly, they also make some solvent-based products that might perform better. At the beginning of this video, I really wanted to run each of these products wet and dry, but due to testing difficulties, that didn't really happen. However, I did end up pressing each of the dry samples the following day when I had the obvious yet previously not thought of, idea to place them horizontally. That said, the results were both encouraging and not really that useful, as each glue, with the possible exception of goop, was stronger than the wood it was adhered to. And that's all I had for this video. Again, I've placed a link to all the products used below. It's an Amazon affiliate link for which the channel earns a small commission. Use is greatly appreciated. Okay, take care.